This is the day the Lord has made. We rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome, everybody. Please have a seat. Good to see you all this morning. It's almost full house. It's excellent. Almost. We're getting good. It's because of Peter, isn't it? Welcome one and all to our service of worship. Uh, welcome to those who will be viewing the, the worship service later on on YouTube. Once again, as we get it all put together after the service this morning, we'll uh, have it up on YouTube for you to watch. And it should be a good one to watch. Announcements, a uh, few. Thanks to decorators, uh, all the people who helped out with the lights, the tree, the, the trimmings. Uh, I don't know, Kyle, if you've seen the angel on top. This is a mistake in the decorating process. <laughs> Those of you can see what's in the angel's arms. You see that? Peter, did you do that? That's where it belongs. That's where it belongs. You see it? Yeah. I might have to apply for another job somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> we're just trying to make a leaf one. Yeah, Stay on the bottom. On the bottom. And thanks to all those who took part in decorating. Really appreciate it. Do you see who has their Christmas light service next Sunday? It'll be aired uh, at 7 p.m. on our YouTube channel. And then it'll be here. We can watch it together, those who want to. So just call in and reserve a spot. Uh, make sure you differentiate between the morning service and the evening service when you call in. Uh, so it'll be on the screen at 7 o'clock here in Sanctuary. And we'll watch it together. Any other announcements? We're good? We're really pleased this morning to have our handbell choir. First time they've been together in a while. A new group of volunteers. So welcome to our handbell choir. They're going to do the introit for us this morning. Job, Handbill Choir. Thank you so much. Glad to have you back with us again. It's a great job. Please join me in a call to worship. The response is in the italicized bold print. The Advent journey is underway. Let's walk with our neighbors as caregivers and truth seekers. Let's engage the world around us with a concern for peace and wholeness. Let's come before our God with humility and love. We shall walk The share in prayer. Our cry is one of longing, O oh God, for restored relationship with you. As we enter the season of Advent, longing is at its greatest. It can be hard to find you in our world, yet we believe you are here with us, renewing all that is broken. <clears throat> Abide with us that we may witness your presence around us and be filled with a new vision of your world. Amen. On this first Sunday in Advent, we light this candle and name it Hope. As we light it, we remember that because of Jesus, we have hope in all circumstances. This candle reminds us that the prophet Isaiah was longing for God's presence. It also reminds us that the people in the early church were longing for God's presence as well. This candle is also a symbol of the longing throughout the world who is suffering from COVID-19. 
those in hospitals and those at home. As we light this candle, we remember our commitment to bring that hope through our love and our caring, expressed through prayers and our actions. I hope for a speedy recovery for all who are suffering from the COVID-19 virus. Let us pray. Oh God, travel with us through Advent and shed your light among us. Give us hearts for generosity and compassion, hearts that reflect your love, and help us to be channels to spread your hope in the world. Amen. <laughs> I just thank the Saunders family for taking part in our Advent candle lighting. I emailed them some ideas and they came through with a beautiful video. So thanks to Glenn, Janice, Ocean, and Kyle. I'm not sure if Kyle was in town or if he was back at Thunder Bay yet. Is he home? Does anybody know? He's back now. He's back now, is he? So thank you to the Saunders family. Also thanks to uh, Oliver Stark for coming and joining with us and uh, lead us in music. Thank you, Oliver. Anytime. Oh, Always during the sacrament of baptism, we celebrate welcoming into the community of a new life. So we'll have our baptismal hymn uh, here at this font from Voices Night at 450, and Oliver and Peter will lead the hymn. Sisters and brothers, celebrate God's gift of grace given to us in the sacrament of baptism. It's one body, one spirit, we have one hope in Christ. There's one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, creator of us all. Out of the water of baptism, we rise with new life, forgiven, renewed, one with Christ members of Christ's body. Listen to these words of scripture which speak about baptism. We baptize into Christ, we put on Christ. Is a Jew nor a Greek, is a slave nor free, is a male or female. We are all one in Christ Jesus. People are bringing little children to Jesus and he should touch them. The disciples rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he was indignant. He said to them, Let the little children come to me, and do not hinder them. The kingdom of God belongs to such as these. I tell you the truth, anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a child will not enter it. He took them in his arms, put his hands on them, and blessed them. I the chair of our worship committee to come forward and introduce the family for baptism.
On behalf of First United Church, I present Amanda Late and Richard Tibbs, who bring their child for initiation into the body of Christ through baptism. Thank you, Amanda. I ask the questions of the parents. Do you believe in God? Who has created and is creating. Has come in Jesus, the word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, and works in us and others by the Spirit. So you'll answer, I do by the grace of God. I do by the grace of God. So I new life in Christ. You seek to resist evil, and to live in love and justice. So you'll answer, I do by the grace of God. You follow the way of Jesus Christ. So you'll answer, I will. God be my helper. I join my brothers and sisters in this community of faith during the life, work, and ministry of Jesus Christ. So you'll answer, I will. God be my helper. God be my helper. And you'll show your child a Christian life and with him in faith. So you'll answer, I will. God being my helper. I will God be my helper. As congregation, please stand. Do you commit yourselves to support and nurture these persons in this community which worships God, loves and serves others, seeks justice and resists evil? We do by the grace of God. We do by the grace of God. And especially these persons are support and our care. The baptized and baptizing people we commit ourselves to support and uphold you within the community of faith. May God grant us all the grace to devote our baptism. Amen. Amen. And let's join together in our words of our creed. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating. Who has come in Jesus, who word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope, in life and in death, in life beyond death. God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Are you seated? Let's give our thanks to God. Gracious and holy God, we bless you for the gift of life, and within it the gift of water. Our son shape promise your spirit heaven of creation. By water comes the growth of the earth. You water the children of Israel to freedom. You water the Jordan. Your child Jesus was baptized. And may your spirit be upon us in what we do. This water may be a sign for all a new life in Christ. Amen. I don't know yet. What's the name of this child? Sterling Tibbs. Okay. Sterling Tibbs. I'll tie you in the name of the Father. Another son, and the Holy Spirit, the Son of the Cross, and marked as Christ forever. May God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and always give you peace. 
Amen. Receive this light of Christ. And hear this light bring your child's heart this day and all the days of Sterling's life. Oh, Amen. And I'm Sterling in the community of faith. Oh, Sterling, did you know that you are very special? You're so special to us all. Oh, come, if you will, to our circle of love. Each of us is special in God's circle of love. In God's circle of love, we hold on to each other. I can see God's love through you. In God's circle of love, we learn to love each other. Each of us is special in God's circle of love. Let us pray. Loving God, ask a blessing upon Sterling and his parents, on their family, friends, all those who love them and support them. May bless today in the sacrament of baptism. May they be yours and grow with you in mind and in knowledge of your son, Jesus Christ. Ask a blessing upon them today and always. Amen. Back to seats. Can you take that photo? <laughs> Got two seats. Yeah, it's yours. It's yours. Thank you. You want to hold that for? All the Advent folders should be out and about now, so please take some time to recognize that you have them. And uh, how much are the Advent folders worth now? Twenty or fifteen? Anyway, no one knows. How much, Glennis? Five dollars for Sunday, so twenty dollars. Please make use of the Advent folders. Let's share our offertory prayer. Let's pray. Living God, as we journey toward Bethlehem. We are called to give from our hearts and minds, as well as from our treasured resources. Bless all our giving. Amen. I hear from Oliver and Peter again, just as I am without one plea. Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, and thou that bidst me come to thee, O Lamb of God, I come, I come, just as I am. Though love unknown has broken every barrier down, now to be thine, yea, thine alone, O Lamb of God, I come, I come. Two readings of scripture for this morning service. The Old Testament, Isaiah, the 64th chapter, in verse 1. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down, so that the mountains would quake at your presence. As when a fire kindles brushwood, a fire causes water to boil. 
Make your name known to our adversaries. The nations might tremble at your presence. We did awesome deeds that we did not expect. You came down, the mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, nor I has seen any God besides you, who works for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who have remembered you in, your, in their ways. But you were angry, and we sinned, because you hid yourself, you transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind take us away. There's no one who calls on your name or attempts to take hold of you. You've hidden your face from us. You've delivered us in the hand of our iniquity. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay. You are the potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O oh Lord. Do not remember iniquity forever. Now consider we are all your people. In Mark's Gospel, 13th chapter, we're going to read the 24th, 24th verse. But in those days, after that suffering, the sun will be darkened, the moon will not give its light, the stars will be falling from heaven, the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels, gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree, from the, from the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branches becomes tender and puts forth leaves, you know that summer is near. See, so also when you see these things taking place, and when he is near at the very gates, truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away till all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows. Are the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. A man going on a journey, he leaves home, puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on a watch. Therefore, keep awake. You do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening or at midnight, or a cock crow at a dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. If I say to you, I say to all, stay awake. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. We do have a, a choir piece uh, that we're going to try. Hopefully it works. Peter put this together. The choir all took part. Uh, he tells me that it's about 30 hours of work to put this <laughs> three-minute video together. 30 hours? Yeah, we'll say that. We'll say that. 30, okay. It takes a long time. Give thanks to God, for He is good. His love endures forever. Give praise to Him, the Lord of lords. His love endures forever. He spread the earth and sea and sky. He filled them all with light and light. Thank you. 
who faithfully sang that in their own homes, wherever they may be, and tape recorded it, to Peter who put it all together. Thank you. Thank you very much. How do you top that? You can do it, Ian. I don't know. I just say amen and go home. <laughs> Any sports enthusiasts out there? Nope. Football in particular. Nobody? I think Carol put her hand up or nodded. Kyle nodded. Shine. Have you heard a two-minute warning? Two-minute warning? Two-minute warning goes off, and oh, Emily, way to go. In football in particular, two-minute warning, the, uh, the play is called dead, and both teams have a, a, a signed timeout. It gives them two minutes to uh, pull out that mir- if they're losing, to pull out that miracle play. If you're winning, to try and some kind of defense in place, so you'll stay ahead. If you're in the fans, and you're in the stands watching, your team is way, way ahead. You want to think about leaving quickly so you get ahead of the parking lot rush. Two minutes offers a lot of time to do different things. It's feels very pretty quick. You can do a lot in two minutes. Reggie Miller, Indiana Pacers star forward, he's retired now in basketball. He scored eight, eight points in nine seconds. Eight points in nine seconds. That's what you do with two minutes. Two minutes is a long time. Advent is our two minute warning. It's our time, we gather together, Light the candles, hope today, peace, love, and joy to follow. It's time we set aside to, to wait, anticipation. <laughs> I think of Advent sometimes, I'm reminded of the Heinz ketchup commercial, where the little boy is struggling to get the ketchup out of the bottle, trying to, <laughs> it's like Advent, you're just waiting for the ketchup to come out of the bottle. Don't quote me on that. <laughs> the first time of Advent, it's our two-minute warning. Trying to get our head wrapped around all that there is at Christmas time. And this year, this year is different, isn't it? Way different. How do we get our heads wrapped around, around Christmas that we, that we always share in? Like, for instance, this past week, we normally get a crowd together to decorate the sanctuary. We had to do it in teams. Normally we have hot chocolate and Timbits. It's a lot of fun decorating the church. This year is different. It's a different Christmas. But it doesn't mean we can't, in our two-minute warning, wrap our head around all that it comes to the world of Bethlehem, all that comes in this last four weeks before Christmas. We have hope. We have hope. The lesson from Mark's Gospel. It's kind of hard to wrap our heads around at this time of year. We think we're going to celebrate. I hope to celebrate, look forward to what's better coming. But Mark's Gospel talks about the final judgment. Final judgment on humanity, of the second coming, bring judgment to everyone, to usher in the final revelation of the kingdom of God. How much has been made about the end of time, when it's going to happen, what it's going to look like, when it's going to be? Way back in the 1980s, I had an Old Testament professor at Carleton University who specialized in uh, apocryphal literature, so the end times literature. He was something of an expert on the subject. And because he was an expert, he became known in the community and across the country. He would write him very long, detailed letters of when the world was going to end and the second coming of Christ would happen and when it would be, what it would look like, how it happened, all the details about it. And he kept every one, put them in a drawer in a filing cabinet. And when that date that was in the letter came, went, he'd take the letter out of the filing cabinet, place it in another filing cabinet, which is now six or seven drawers thick, Water with paper, 
All the times people thought the world's going to end, we're still here. We're still here. We're still here. So there's a purpose that Jesus telling his followers that are you ready for the last day. Especially on the first Sunday of Advent, we were talking about hope. And Jesus is saying, you got to be ready for the last day. That are you ready? So a man going on a journey, he says. Leaves from his house, puts his slaves in charge, says the doorkeeper, stay awake. Stay awake, stay ready, stay prepared. You don't know what's going to happen. You don't know what's going to happen next. Two-minute warning is not to say the game is over. It's not finished. It's time really to get our heads to the game. We try to understand what it means to celebrate hope in the season of Advent. And that's how we treat this world of ours. God calls us to look after his creation. And it matters. It matters deeply how we treat one another. How we live. Our families. Our friends. Extended families. Colleagues. How we treat the stranger in our midst. Those who are homeless. Those who are hungry. Two minute warning we find throughout Scripture. Not just in Mark's Gospel, but throughout Scripture. Two minute warning is a top opportunity to get our heads in the game. We think of what we do next. The plan we're going to do next, and how we're going to achieve that goal. How are we going to make other people find love of Christ or love of God? C.S. Lewis said, Aim at heaven, and you get earth thrown in. Aim at earth, and in the end, you get nothing. Aim at heaven, you get the earth thrown in. Aim at earth, and in the end, you get nothing. We aim only at earth. All we are is wrapped up in ourself. Our world, our issues, our needs. This is the meaning of Christ's call. We aim at heaven. So life here takes on an entirely different story. We can look brand new. We can see ourselves as servants. We can stay awake like the doorkeeper, even in awareness, perhaps even constant awareness, that each minute is God given to us, and each minute is an opportunity, an opportunity to act on. I believe in more than we want to see on earth. I believe something's bigger, something's better, more powerful than any darkness we can, or us as humanity can devise. Mother Teresa often reminded her sisters that Christians were not called to be successful. Christians were called to be faithful. Not called to be successful. Called to be faithful. Called Jesus is not to be perfect. Not even to succeed or have success as the world stipulates what success is. Measured that way or without a standard. She would tell her sisters that to be a Christian means to live faithfully. To live faithfully in all times. This first Sunday of Advent, we're all being asked to have hope. Let Advent happen in our hearts and our minds. And in doing so, we're empowered to live with our God, our world, and our fellow human beings in a way that will not cause us to be afraid or worried or even surprised, but rather overjoyed. The story about, I may not pronounce this wrong, but I'll try, Ines Jan Paderewski, Russian composer, famous pianist, died in 1941. Seen one evening he was scheduled to perform a very a uh, large concert. It was kind of a black tie affair. All the men were in tuxedos and full length gowns for the women. And a woman showed up. She was with her fidgety nine year old son. As she turned to talk with her friends, the boy slipped from her grasp, went up on stage, sat down at the master's grand piano, and began playing chopsticks. Chopsticks. The mother was horrified. An angered audience began looking at the child, wooing and hissing for him to be taken from the stage. Backstage, Federiski heard what was happening, understood what was happening very quickly, grabbed his coat with the tails, and running out on the stage, leaning behind the boy, and started adding harmony to the notes the boy was playing. Whispered in the boy's ear, Don't quit. Don't quit. I'm here with you. Don't quit. I don't know if some of you listening. It does appear that we're at the end times. COVID doesn't help. Other signs around us, the conflicts, the wars. Start looking at things differently when you put it all together. Perhaps your own personal world. 
You have things going wrong, things that upset you, things that cause you grief. Your world is coming apart. You're at a loss to know how to go on. Don't quit. Don't quit. Have the master play over your hands in the harmony. The dawn of Advent begins once again this day. Turn our hearts towards the coming of Jesus. Pause. Take a breath. Recognize the hope we have. Meeting together, still worshiping together. Here in person, through technology, the message of Christ is still being shared. Here we have to commit ourselves again to the hope that is Christ. Life makes sense, even amidst the most difficult times. By God's grace, may it be. May this Advent open our hearts to the wonderful hope for us in the coming of Jesus. And his two minute warning is really a reminder we live, knowing that he is here, whispering around our shoulder. Don't quit. Keep on playing. I love you. Don't quit. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Peter, you have a prayer response? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Of God, we gather together and worship once more to hear a word proclaimed, share in the witness and work of our church, to celebrate you with us, celebrate your love for all of us. And on this Sunday, this first Sunday of Advent, to begin to hope, hope for a better world, a better place. Difficulty may rise amongst us, O oh God. The second wave of COVID may be on its way. Yet please be with us in a sense of hope for the future. That humanity working together may develop a vaccine. May inoculate as many as possible to prevent further deaths of the COVID-19 disease. Be with us, O oh God, as we hope, as we pray for a better tomorrow. God, hear our prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 Hallelujah. Oh God, oh, this year is different. We're not gathering in our groups to have our Christmas parties, Christmas dinners and gatherings. Still, there is that love for each other. Be it in our workplace, our home life, our church life. I also share in different ways. Through phone calls, emails, Snapchat. However, you stay in touch with one another. To know that we still care for one another. There are many ways to do it, O oh God. Help us not just to sit aside and wait for others to come by. But to work towards our own goals ourselves. To use technology, use the phone, stay in touch and tell people that they're loved, they're cared for. God, hear our prayer. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you for your presence here with us today. Showing us the way, showing us possibilities of Advent, allowing us to take this two minute warning. Wrap our heads around Christmas this year 
It's not an excitement. It's not anticipation. We celebrate the birth of a child. Not just any child. Your child. Jesus. His blessing in Bethlehem be a blessing to us all this year. Let's celebrate his birth in hope. God, hear our prayer. all. With us as we pray together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Amen. 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 Forever and ever. Amen. Shine, Jesus, shine is our last hymn. All our Peter, please. Peace to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Again, I would instruct the ushers to take time to walk through the church. We exit from the rear of the pews backwards. <laughs>